Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. So batteries, they are like the heart and soul of your renewable energy setup. So if you've got solar panels or PV panels, you're not actually running off of solar power. You're always going to be running off of your batteries. And then that energy that you get from the sun, that's just recharging those batteries. So batteries store energy in amp hours. So if there's if a battery has a capacity of like let's say 100 amp hours, that means that you can run an appliance that only requires one amp to run for 100 hours. Or if it's a two amp appliance, it can run for 50 hours. Batteries are rated in cycle life and they'll use either a deep cycle application or a shallow cycle application. One cycle of a deep cycle on a deep cycle battery it goes from fully charged to fully discharged. And they're made to be used for long periods of time throughout the full discharge of the battery. Shallow cycle batteries, they're used to just crank out a bunch of amps and then not be used after that. So those are what you have in your car. You start and it cranks the battery and then you don't need it once the car is started. For all of your renewable energy storage and off-grid needs, you're definitely going to only want deep cycle batteries. And if you can only use the top 20% of your batteries, your lifespan of your batteries will increase dramatically up to like 10 or 20 years. So if you have more batteries, then you only have to use less and less of the capacity and they last a lot longer. The two most common types of batteries used in renewable energy storage are going to be lead acid and lithium ion. So let's take a look at lead acid first. There in lead acid, there's two categories of lead acid batteries. You have flooded and sealed. Flooded batteries are the ones that you can remove the caps on top and there's like three or six holes and you every once in a while you have to fill them with distilled water. So these are actually the cheaper kind of the lead acid batteries because they require that extra maintenance. Also they've got some little finicky things about them like you can only keep them in an upright position because they have the caps right and uh, they require the maintenance Plus, they also have to be ventilated. You can't put those inside a living space uh, because of the fumes that are slowly released. The other category of lead acid batteries are sealed, or they're also called valve regulated. These ones don't require regular maintenance, and you can even mount them sideways, but you shouldn't mount them upside down. Also, the sealed batteries, they come in either a deep cycle application or shallow cycle. So if you're using it for your renewable energy uh, needs, you're definitely going to want to get the deep cycle ones. So then within the sealed category of the lead acid batteries, you have two types. You've got AGM and gel. The AGM batteries will work with most charge controllers and inverters. The AGM batteries also charge and discharge much more quickly and efficiently than the gel batteries. And if you hook the gel batteries up to charge either too quickly or on the wrong cycle, you can actually boil the gel inside and then because of the boiling there gets like gas pockets or you know like air bubbles and uh, then they either may or may not go away. So these are all types of lead acid batteries. They just have different chemistries. Yeah, that just means they have different ways of storing the electrolytes inside. So then the other common type of battery is lithium ion. The lithium ion batteries started out as batteries in power tools or that's what you're going to find in your cell phones and cameras and computers. So they're still kind of new on the scene of renewable energy storage. Uh, the lithium ion batteries, they're almost always going to be deep cycle batteries. And just like the lead acid batteries, if you only use like the top 20%, you're going to extend the life of the battery drastically. The lithium ion batteries, they don't have as many categories and types and chemistries as the lead acid batteries. So let's just get to comparing the difference between lithium ion in general to lead acid in general. Lifespan. Lithium batteries have roughly 5,000 life cycles in them and that's compared to lead acid batteries having a measly 400 to 800 life cycles. That's six to ten times longer of a life that you'll get out of a lithium ion battery than a lead acid battery. Size and weight. 
Lithium ion batteries weigh one third the weight of a regular lead acid battery. Plus, they're smaller in size too. So hey, that's great for RVing. Plus, if you're gonna be ordering them, you're gonna be saving on shipping costs as well. Performance. Lithium ion batteries have a low self discharge amount, which means they don't lose power over time. So what you put in as a charge, you're gonna get out when you discharge. So the higher self discharge rate of lead acid batteries, that might account for um, a much shorter lifespan. Also, even on a low charge of a lithium ion battery, you're gonna get the same voltage output. For example, if a lead acid battery is discharged quite a bit and near the end of its charge, it's going to produce less voltage for you to draw from. So lithium ion batteries are constant in the voltage that they can output. Thermal tolerance. Both batteries age slower in cooler temperatures, but the lithium ion will last longer in hotter temperatures. And even if it's like, you know, consistently up into like 120 degrees out. So that one totally blows lead acid out of the way. And both of them are also less efficient in cooler temperatures. However, the lithium ion battery will last longer, be more efficient and at much cooler temperatures than lead acid, even like down to negative 20 degrees. Maintenance. Lithium ion batteries are a low to no maintenance battery. And that's an advantage that some lead acid battery chemistries can't claim. Development. Lead acid batteries are over a hundred years old. So their manufacturing and chemistries are well developed, trusted, and pretty reliable. Lithium ion batteries were first conceived in the 1970s and then they became very popular in the 90s. And only now are they really getting to be an option for renewable energy storage. So they're still kind of in development phase, but they're great batteries and they're only gonna get better and better. Environmental. Manufacturing lead acid batteries creates worse of an environmental impact than it does with lithium. Also, the processing of lead acid batteries has uh, worse side effects. So lithium ion batteries, when manufacturing those, they're not like totally clean. They've got their own setbacks as well, uh, but they are a little bit cleaner. However, the lead acid batteries have a much better, higher rate of recycling and uh, the lithium ion recycling process hasn't quite gotten there yet, but because they're still kind of new, it's expected that eventually the recycling and uh, availability of recycling for lithium ion batteries will rival that of lead acid batteries today. Price. Lithium ion batteries are much more expensive than lead acid batteries. In fact, lithium ion batteries are even like double the cost of the sealed lead acid batteries. And remember that the sealed lead acid batteries are more expensive than the flooded ones. So they're, they could even be twice that or more. However, if you look at it long term, your lithium ion batteries are gonna la last much longer than the lead acid batteries. So if you can afford that initial upfront higher cost, it may work out cheaper in the long run. So anyway, comparing these basics between lithium ion and lead acid batteries, lithium ion kicks some serious butt. <laughs> so they're definitely uh, more efficient, their performance is better, lifespan, um, they just cost a little bit more, but it could definitely be worth it. So most RV electrical systems, they'll come with either 30 amps or 50 amps of current, and that's at 12 volts. So often your house batteries are gonna be 12 volts, or you could get six volt batteries and hook them up in series to get 12 volts of, of power output to your 12 volt electrical system. So remember that just like connecting PV panels or solar panels. The way that you wire them together can either maintain or increase power. So the same thing goes for batteries. If you hook batteries up in series, you will add the volts together and maintain the amps. And if you connect them in parallel, you'll add the amps together and it maintains the volts. 
It's also really important to have the same age or same exact wear and tear on your batteries. This is because if you connect batteries in parallel and you'll see you connect four batteries together in parallel and one battery is weaker, those other batteries, they're going to send support to that weaker battery, which means you get a lower output of power. So you want to make sure that you know they buy them at the same time or at the very most, you know, a year apart so that they're roughly the same uh, capabilities. So like I just said, it's most common to see RVs with 12 volt systems. However, it does exist where some RVs will come with 24 volt systems. Now, you wouldn't really need a 24 volt system unless you're getting like 150 amps or more. And like I said, most RVs are 30 amps or 50 amps. So that's a pretty big jump for a lot of people. Uh, however, the 24 volt systems do exist. And if you had 24 volt systems, you'd want to be wiring your batteries together to produce 24 volts output versus the more common 12 volt output. So you can either do that with, uh, you know, adding your batteries and connecting them the right way or using 24 volt batteries. So the lithium ion batteries, they often come as 24 volt batteries, where the lead acid batteries, you can get them in a variety like two volts, six volts, 12 volts, and even 24 volts. So with the lithium ion batteries, if you only have a 12 volt system and you're gonna be using 24 volt batteries, you must make sure that your charge controller and your inverter can accept and work with that higher voltage. A lot of inverters and charge controllers nowadays will have that option to adjust between the different voltages. And uh, it's possible you might even have to change out like a breaker or a cable size here and there. When hooking up your batteries, it's really, really important to make sure that the length and size of cables between all of your batteries are as equal as they can be. In fact, the shorter, the better. Same goes for the length of cabling between your charge controller and your batteries and your inverter. If you can make those as short as possible, you're gonna have less potential electricity loss. So if you can install them in the same area, that's the best thing to do. So how do you know like how big of a cable you, you need here and there? Well, you can reference uh, an ampacity chart on my website. And it's basically just a grid um, of a bunch of different numbers. And on the top, you'll read the amps that you're using or that, that are coming through uh, where you're trying to figure out. And then on like the Y axis or vice versa X axis, uh, you'll have the length. So you'll need to know how long your cables are gonna be. That's why you kinda need to know where you're installing everything and the closer the better. So then you just find the point where they intersect and it'll tell you the gauge and size of wiring or cabling that you need. So it's really beneficial to do that. And in fact, that works for um, all sorts of electrical projects, not just working with solar and batteries and things like that. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the two previous videos in this series, and then there's another one coming up, uh, all on RV solar, RV living, you know, with solar stuff. So check those out. You can connect with me on my RV living forum, where you can also connect with other full-time RVers and read a lot of different information and comments, join the conversations. You can also get your Keep It Simple bumper sticker there, as well as read through my blog, which has a bunch of uh, great information on RV living and different aspects of that. Also, you can connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you again so much for watching, and until next time, keep it simple.